I watched Travis Scott on Ballers. The guy keeps his eyes closed the whole time. Looks down like this the whole time. Mm -hmm. He's a strange, strange cat. <sighs> You, that's another good documentary. You're a little older for it, but you'd appreciate it. What? Well, they just sh they show his come up. They show him at this music festival in his hometown of Houston. Yeah, tell me about him. What makes him so good? Good rapper or just? I don't even know. If he's that good of a rapper. He's just like he's he's definitely unique. A personality. He just makes good no, music. not he's not a personality. He what? He just makes good music. That's really oh, yeah. It. It's, it's great that's, music. He's not yeah, a personality. That's a big deal. His just a good musician. He's uh, not, he's not I a, think he. Writes and then produces his own mm -hmm. stuff. And he, right. he got really he got really hot on SoundCloud. And then this 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 Netflix uh, uh, says, "Look, Mama can fly." They show him when he's like first getting started, and they show him at like this thing in Houston. And you know, he, they're like it's Travis Scott, and there's seven people in the crowd, and he, nobody's listening to him. And then they three years later, and dude, it's he's in an arena, and like Travis Scott, and the crowd goes fucking nuts. wow. It's really Look at cool. That. Damn. Really, really cool. Brian, I don't know if you would know this, but that is Kylie Jenner's baby daddy. I do know that. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like Kim I and Kanye get a divorce, huh? Oh yeah, I heard she met with divorce uh, yeah. attorneys. I wonder what that looks like. Cause he's worth a billion. She's not struggling, so <laughs> yeah. it's like I guess just custody of the kids. I feel like they probably, probably have Kim. a prenup. Well, custody with the kids. Like if that. he's if he's got mental illness, that's a very dicey. So, yeah. you know, it's tough. It's not going to be easy on him. You worry about a guy like Kanye. You really do. Oh, yeah. oh, like, you, you worry about him, what he might do. I, I, I don't include the, the, the videos and stuff. I don't look at any of it. I don't. It's so sad. I don't see any of it. So Kim posted this, I think, yesterday or very, very recently. Tough. She's say, she's saying that she's she wants empathy from people because he it does deal with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. So it's tough for them and the family. Like, so it's tough that everyone's kind of looking at Kanye as this crazy guy, but she's really dealing with oh, some wow, I haven't seen this. yeah so she goes as many as you know kanye has bipolar disorder which he was diagnosed a few years ago and he, he was on medications decided to get off it because he feels less creative on it uh so he says uh anyone who has this or has a loved one in their life who does knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand i've never spoken publicly about how this has affected us at home because i'm very protective of our children kanye's right to privacy when it comes to his health but today i feel like i should comment on it because of the stigma misconceptions about mental health those that understand mental illness or even compulsive behavior know that the family is powerless uh, unless the member is a minor. Mm -hmm. People who are unaware or far removed from this experience can be judgmental and not understand that the individual themselves have to engage in the process of getting help no matter how hard family and friends try. Correct. Understand Kanye is subject to criticism because he is a public figure and his actions at times can cause strong opinion and emotions. He is a brilliant but complicated person who on top of the pressure of being an artist, like a dumbass decided to run for president, uh, uh, who experienced the painful loss of his mother, a steal with depression and isolation is heightened by his bipolar. Those who are close to Kanye know his heart and understand his words sometimes do not align with his intentions. Living bipolar disorder does not diminish or invalidate his dreams and his creative ideas, no matter how big or unattainable they may feel. That is part of his she's, genius, and we have all witnessed many of his big of dreams come yes. true. Good for her. Well, dude, rem imagine that's the father of your children she's going through a lot oh, dude, she can't. suffers with uh, she has psoriasis really bad she's dealing with this there's a lot of stuff it's not Big like how much money you have you know you're dealing with stuff but apparently she's done a fuckload to get in the innocent exonerated like, she seems like a pretty good, person. A good person yeah, yeah. not that new okay. uh do you want to take me through your baggy blue socks that don't match with anything these are my wearing? boosts and uh what i'll do is i'll recycle socks so i wear them one day and i go warm for a couple hours Gonna wear them again clean. Today. I do the same. Yeah, I do that. I do that with all my stuff. I don't like to waste water. I do the same. Uh, yeah. My buddy one time, it bothers me. I think about it once a week, and I don't know why. This is 15 years ago. He's a little bit of a spoiled Nancy. He's been he was coddled as a kid. He put on some fucking jeans. Okay. He went downstairs. Uh huh. His wife said it might be hot for those jeans, and he said you're probably right. Took them off. Put them in the fucking laundry hamper. Well, that's laziness. And I went. Well, that's just laziness. I go. Those aren't dirty. And he goes, Nah, I know, but I that's lazy. Them. That's lazy. I've done that. that. Bothered me. I've done that before. I went. You get those I'll out right now. I'll just throw them on the ground. Get them out right now. Fold them. Well, I'll just throw mine on the ground. Well, yeah, fuck it. Fold them. Throw them on the ground. It's fine because I'll wear them again. Yeah. Don't too. put them in the laundry hamper. It bothers me. I get it though. It's lazy. Maybe you just want to put it on there because you didn't feel like rehanging it. You know. Bought two blazers this weekend. 
Bought two blazers. Oh, yeah? They got Where are you going to wear them? Well, let me ask you this. I wear them. Why buy blazers? You have nowhere to go. Because. And B, where the fuck are you going that people are fitting you for Because blazers? I'm a high testosterone 53 year old, and a man at my age should wear a blazer and a convertible has give, Corvette. Nope, has some a convertible give in the back Corvette, so I yellow. Can fight in case I get into a situation. Why did you buy blazers? Where are you going to wear those, Papa? Wherever I want. When it's chilly and when it's not chilly, where did I'm going to be a blazer guy. Did, where'd you go to buy them? Uh, I, I went to Rag and Bone. Good, good. Off Abbott, Kenny? Yep. And they had a sale. Were they open? I couldn't resist. They were open? Yeah, and they had a sale. Well, I mean, fuck. Yeah, no shit. You know what I mean? Everywhere's on sale. Yeah, so I got some good threads for very cheap. So you could you wear it at your house. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't resist. Well, once they come up with a vaccine, I'll be out on the town. Yeah, you look fresh, Papa. I want to look fresh. It's like, I sit back and I worry, not because people who maybe are, are feeling oppressed feeling hurt feel excitement in bringing someone else down and feeling like they ha have an active part in it that's why they're doing it, it. makes sense i don't like it but I, I i get that what i don't like and what i think is even more concerning is that this overall feeling of everyone getting excited at the misfortune Agreed. of others it's really sad and i don't think it's just social media i think that the real meat, like the the actual mainstream media, plays a bigger role. Um, well, well, here's one quick example. Like I was watching. Um, I never watched any of Gordon Ramsay's TV until the um, the lockdown. I just started watching some of Gordon Ramsay's shows. And there's was a Hell's Kitchen or some other show where he goes in and he talks shit to people who don't run a restaurant right. I just started watching them too for whatever reason. And so they have this episode where this guy's an asshole he yells he, he's petulant he doesn't want to hear what gordon ramsay has to say he's lazy he runs and the editing and the and the show creates this idea through 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 the way the way they created the episode made you just hate this guy and made you want to hear gordon ramsay lay into him yep and i could feel myself going like yeah get him gordon he's get a him, fucking gordon. asshole well because i'm watching them you know now years later they have the like extras on the streaming services i'm watching it he starts interviewing him at the beginning of before they start even going into the restaurant and finding all these flaws and he said yeah i uh my father passed away very young and he, he was our only parent my mom died too and so my brother raised me and Jesus. he got in the restaurant industry and he was my hero and i modeled everything wow everything on how my brother did it and frankly he was the he was the dad i didn't know how to run a business but i just want to be just like my brother my brother died eight years ago oh, of like Jesus some free cancer Christ. and so now i'm left here and i don't really know how to run this Fuck. restaurant and, and you're like oh wow yeah oh that that's but yet, but but Fox or whoever whatever production company said <laughs> we can't That's go that creative, route. No yeah. one's gonna want to watch. We got to create this idea so that we stand up and go, go Gordon, yeah, fuck him, this Gordon, guy yeah. up. And I'm like, this is what we need to get away from. You talking this, about that happened to Gordon or that happened to the guy Gordon? No, that was happened to the guy after? Gordon was. This yelling. is and and, and, and but yet if you yeah. watch the episode, and you didn't happen to You're like rooting for Gordon to tear into him. If my that's, daughter that's didn't start screaming or some reason, and I didn't lost sight of the, and then this thing kept going, and I watched the fucking extras, which I never would have watched, I would have had no idea. And yet the episode created this idea for the sake of ratings, for the sake of getting people to watch the show over and over again. That like no, this man bad, this man terrible. We should cheer on Gordon yep. getting upset and stuff. Yep. Someone, oh, someone put Fauci had the worst first pitch of all time. Do we have that? I have that too. <laughs> <laughs> I, seen it. I need to see Fauci, that. Uh, Fauci said. Uh, I was reading this article with Fauci. You know, he said he's he's when he was going through the AIDS first. Stuff, crisis stuff, he'd get hate mail. He was I've never got hate mail like uh, I have for this. He's you know my kids and my wife have been you know we've had to have uh -huh. stricter security. Like people are mad at me because I'm trying to, you know, I'm just doing my best what I know, you know, being safe. And people are mad, think I'm, you know, trying to go against Trump and shut down the economy. They're pointing the finger at me. He's like, I'm just giving you my recommendation. You guys do what you want, but don't point, like, what do you want me to do, man? Yeah. I'm a disease expert. Right. I'm telling you what I know. Right. You know, it's, I want It's a bummer. Let me see Dr. Fauci right. here. Oh. 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 Oh, 50 cents is way worse. Yeah, 50 cents is People just hate Fauci. 50s was way worse. Uh, it's tough if you've never done it, man. Well, you do it before. <laughs> you do? Oh, yeah. That's not your first pitch. But then Fuck. it's like, you know, your nerves and stuff. Especially There's no one in the I would crowd. love but to still, try it. But still, you know, you're on TV. I would love to try it. You know, the, the joke here, a lot of people are saying, obviously, 
Like he was social distancing the ball from home plate. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. We've talked about this before, but I used to work for CNN and HLN uh, a while back. And there was this instance where I was on, I'm not like a confrontational guy, but <clears> one time I was on, this is live TV. And there's this girl there. She's a reporter from, you know, bullshit.com uh, somewhere up in, in the Bay Area. And there's this instance where this man, um, it, it appeared to be homeless, who knows, but he was he was clearly not right. He was walking through the streets of San Francisco with like a, a machete. Okay. okay. Obviously, cops are called. Can't have that. Cops call. Um, it's a group of cops. Uh, it, it, a, a black gentleman, by the way, the, the machete guy. Um, cops do a lot of damage. A machete, a machete very, very unforgiving. Shit, yeah, very ask, unforgiving. Ask MS-13. They can. Yeah. Do, you can do some serious damage yeah. with a uh, machete. Yeah. Um, cops come. Machete. Try to gather around him, and then they uh, initially like three or four cops, a couple of them black, corral the guy and hap happen to maybe you know throw him down or whatever they can do to get cuffs well, on him and well, take yeah. away the machete. Yeah, very very right. appropriate. He's lucky to get shot. So we're having lucky to get shot. If I'm a cop, I might have to shoot you. Totally agree. I'm thinking, I don't know shit about policing, but I'm thinking in my head, I was like, man, that was a pretty measured way to handle it. They didn't fucking blast the guy. He has a deadly weapon. Was he naked too? No, no, but he was, he he was, was usually naked. screaming and okay. talking to himself. You know? And um, this reporter is saying like, and, and here we see yet again another um, example of white supremacy. Right? Dumbass. So wow. I, I absolutely lose my cool and I start screaming at her. Type and I, I mean, like veins coming down my neck on Type live move, television. Man. Type move. And it goes on, the crowd's cheering, everyone's yelling and everything. And I sit back down, we go to commercial break, and I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I fucked up. I really fucked up. And this this girl had to be like 21 or something. She's and I'm dum dumb. Start crying. Maybe I, I maybe. She's uh, dumb. Uh, intellectual stuff aside, I'm like, I, I shouldn't have done that. And I and I'm like, man, I'm probably gonna get a talking to you from the producers. I'm like, I, this is not good. So we go to commercial break. I go over and I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't. I totally don't agree with you, but I, I shouldn't have done that. That was wrong, and I apologize. She's like, it's okay. I thank you for saying that. Did you get in her face? No, we were we were ten yards apart. Yeah. But I, I'm literally like, into is that far? Are you fucking considering all the real white supremacy in the world? Yeah. And think about what uh, Emmett Till's family has to think about that when you're calling policemen doing their work yeah, of white supremacy. Yeah. Good, you know, you're right. You know, yeah. and I, I still think I'm right. But my point being is, I totally lost my. It was a man who would have hit him. Yeah. I get off with the show ends. Uh, I get back to the green room to take off my makeup and the executive producer comes in and I'm thinking like, oh, here he goes. He goes, dude, oh, love that's it. what I'm talking about. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm like, what? He's like, that's television. Here we go. You know, it is. So two months later, uh, we have, uh, it was like a, a explosion of right when Caitlin Tran uh, transferred over into when Bruce, went, when to Bruce went to Caitlin. So there was a lot of trans talk. A lot. For we him. had a a, um, a a trans activist and then also uh, some religious figure. I, I don't know if he's a priest or a pastor, but he was a man of the cloth. And he was on there and he uh, disagreed with me and disagreed with this activist, but at the same time was incredibly measured, very kind, and was everyone was kind of talking He politely. disagreed that he, he Caitlin thought, should be able to Oh, I just he, thought he that just trans that it wasn't a mental a illness can that it's be someone trying. Oh, yeah, well, he was blah, blah. saying it's not a mental. He illness. was going the, the the kind of traditional religious route that the, a man is a man, a woman's a woman. You can't change that. Blah blah blah. Okay. I was having some disagreement with him. This lady was having some disagreement with him, but everything was very civil and and actually very. And he was really likable and nice. I'm like, oh, that was that was really great. I I hope more people saw that because you could see that you could have disagreements and and it would be civil. I get off. I go to take off my makeup. Like an executive producer comes in, he's like, "We can't, we can't be having you back if that's all you got." <laughs> and I go, "Dude," and he's like, oh, we, "Come on, babe, we're in, we're in, we're in the ratings business." That's yeah, like, we need, we need yeah. to fight. And this is kind of neat. So, uh, younger <laughs> kids are taking advantage of the whole mask thing, so they're dressing up as Smart. old people to buy alcohol. That's hilarious. Smart. Some of them are pretty good, and they're getting away with it, huh? Yep. And this is, I think, a dude. Put a wig on. A wig. You know those things you put on top, a scarf on top? It makes you sure. look like you're an older woman, too. So that's a fun one. I'm sure the and, liquor uh, store's like, what Let's go over here. Yeah. The liquor store's like, like, we're just trying to get sales. Hey, guys, Who gives a fuck? You see my back ripple, and I pull myself up like a chimp, <laughs> like a chimp, 30 like times bang, while talking to you. Why wouldn't I give that to you as it's inspiration? It's a gift. It's a gift, really. It's a gift. Shit.